Maybe we could talk about the second part of this, which was about when we see, and it's very much related, but there's some other things that um, we wanted to so mention. So the second part is? When we see emotions as a means to an end. Yeah, maybe I should write that a bit better. Who can relate to seeing emotions as a means to an end? Yeah. And what's the end? <laughs> at one minute, what else? Some people when, don't have that But when that we end. say at one minute with God, we're being pretty vague, yeah. aren't we? Because at the end of the day, most of us have never been at one with God before. So we have no idea what that means. So it's just an imaginary place, really, for most of us at this point in time. And while other people might have done their, their best to try and describe to you what that place is going to feel like, at the end of the day, if you don't feel anything, you're not going <laughs> to be very connected to the de description, right? Yeah. And, and as we said before, lots of people see at one moment as a place where there's no emotion. So that end That's is not problem. really realistic. <laughs> yeah. Eloisa? Eloisa? Mine's just that I might be happy at the end of it. It's not even a certainty for me. It's like right. So, yep. so you see the end as happy. Yeah. Yep. Or a little bit of joy or something or joyful. better than where I am now. And emotions are the means to that end. Yeah. But aren't they emotions? Yeah. So how do you have an emotion that's a means <laughs> to an emotion? I don't know it's about that. It's a logical emotion. Not very logical. <laughs> If we think about it logically even, we see uh, there's something wrong with our thinking here because they are emotions. So aren't we saying emotions are a means to emotions? <laughs> no, that doesn't make much sense. <laughs> like the reality is they are emotions, so the end is emotional. Can you see? Right. Even, for, even if we don't have a concept of God or a concept of anything, oftentimes the goal in our life is to become happy, right? Isn't happy an emotion? So, but often we, we don't see it that way, right? We think, I'll just feel all my sadness so then I can have the happy emotion and block out the sadness. It, it's not really logical in that the only way to get happy is to stay open to feeling sad. And happy. Yeah, well, that's what in my experience is. It's, it's, I find it's hard to be happy or joyful. Well, now the last little while it's kind of just been happening, which is kind of nice. But in general, I'm trying real hard to have any emotion. And the, ha and the happy doesn't, like I'm as scared of the real happy as I am of the real fear. Yeah. So a key of this is trying rather than... Doing it. Experiencing. Yeah, doing or experiencing. If we have to try, it means that we have some beliefs that, we d that are flawed with regard to our emotion. Right. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Anything else, you, Paul? Uh, to get all our fear out of us, to be free of fear. Yes. So it's a means to be fearless in the end. Yeah. Yeah. And while that is partly true, you know, feeling your emotions is a way that you will eventually become fearless. At the end of the day, that's not the end goal. The end goal is far greater than that. Yeah. And can you see how within it, it um, demonstrates a prejudice against certain emotions? So it's saying, I just want to be free of this yucky emotion, fear. And if the process is to open ourselves up to emotion, we've already got a prejudice against one of them in that we don't like it. Whereas in, in this change of state thing that we're talking about, we'll say, I want all emotion because it's an expression of who I am right now. So what are those bad emotions you? By the ones you've been defining as bad. Fear. Fear. Anger. Anger. Shame. Humiliation. Yes. Guilt. Powerlessness. Guilt. Hatred. Hatred. Yeah, which is seething rage, isn't it? And what are the good emotions? Joy. Joy. Happy. <laughs> Love. I can, see, I can see some that people see as a good emotion that I often question. Comfort. Being free of any discomfort. Yeah. Security? 
Yeah, so you can see some of these are pretty distorted as well, right? Because this is, again, the way we think. We think these are good, these are bad, the other ones you don't want to have, these are the ones you want to have, sex is in there. <laughs> that could be a boat. Oh, yeah, that could be a <laughs> <laughs> I agree. <laughs> and, and in fact, to be honest, some of these can be swapped around quite a lot for some people, right? <laughs> you know, some of them like good emotion, anger. That feels good, powerful. You know, like we, we're so distorted in our, even our judgments of emotion that you've really just got to give up judgment of emotion. So you just feel them. Stop judging every one of them. Some of the ones you think are bad are actually good. Some of the ones that are good and you, you think are good, they'll actually leave you and you'll never have them again. <laughs> and you won't miss them either, by the way. You know, that's bound to happen. But at the moment, because of the way we've been taught, we have no idea of that. We have no idea of that. Hmm. So really, for most of us, the way we've been seeing is emotion is emotions are a means to the end of not feeling those and feeling those. And we don't even really know which one of those are in harmony with God or not, to be honest, because we haven't felt enough to know. We're select very selective, yes. So, you know, we don't, some of us think anger is good, but, but from God's perspective, it's not that crash hot. Some of us think sexual stuff is bad, but actually from God's perspective, it's pretty good. Right? Some of us think being safe is good, but, but safety and addiction to safety is, from God's perspective, is pretty bad. <laughs> so, you know, like we're even mixed up about what's what, what's what. So what we have internally, and each of our lists are different, internally, each of you have a list of bad emotions and good emotions, which have been totally defined by your environmental experience. they got no relevance whatsoever in your relationship with God, most of them. They've just been defined by your emotional experience. Or, we should say, been defined by the suppressed experience. If you had been allowed to experience some of these emotions, you wouldn't be so complicated about having them. Right? But most of us were never allowed to experience these emotions. And now that AJ comes along and says, you're allowed to, what do you feel then? You go, I'm allowed to. Mm. <laughs> I don't feel like I'm allowed to. <laughs> that doesn't compute very well, right? My belief system from my childhood, I wasn't allowed to. I was punished violently most of the time, every time I experienced an emotion. So that told me I wasn't allowed to. I was harmed Generally, when I felt an emotion, that was I was humiliated when I felt a good emotion and I expressed it. So I'm not allowed to even feel a good one. Uh, so when AJ comes along and says, you're allowed to feel an emotion, the internal belief system is even complete in opposition to that. You're really, internally, you go, what an idiot. What fancy saying that? My experience has been completely the opposite of that. My experience has been in my childhood, I wasn't allowed to feel that. I wasn't allowed to feel this. I was punished when I felt that. I was violently abused when I felt that. I was sexually abused when I felt this. And I, We've got all these things going on. All of the things that happened in our childhood, right, that we weren't allowed to experience or we were suppressed or harmed in some way is what we believe right now. So how can you think you think clearly? How can you intellectually believe that you're thought process has clarity it doesn't have clarity and the more that's happened to you the less clarity probably it has the more you've been suppressed the less clarity you probably experience right and you've got to come to awareness of that the only way clarity can occur is by allowing the experience of all emotion that's the only way clarity will ever be arrived at so some people ask me, why is it that you seem to know what I feel when I'm talking to you? Because I have some clarity. Why do I have some clarity? Because I've let myself feel those emotions you haven't. Mm. 